All right, everyone, welcome along. So I thought we'd have a look at what goes on and how we built a corporate calendar. Okay, we're going to go in, we're going to build the corporate calendar. We can start with the one that we've built already using Copilot that's available on our GitHub. So we'll have a look at that. We'll go through it in detail. We might even add a few things to it if we can, if it makes sense to do, but I don't think we need to. But, you know, if you want me to add anything, let us know down below. What we'll also do, though, and more importantly, is we're going to bring in the holiday calendar. Now, this is something that we get asked a lot for. And it's based on something and the methodology and the mindset behind it is a really important part for so many businesses, not just in terms of are we open or are we closed. But for, a retailer biz for a retail business, you may also find that you've got periods of high volume leading up to a holiday or even after a holiday. And the best way that we can start to piece these together is actually, well, let's work out how can we have the holidays. Okay, from there, we can start to work out, well, what should we be doing beforehand or how can we actually work out an evolution to it? What do I mean? So if we think, say, Black Friday, okay, like the, the Friday after Thanksgiving, right? it's a U.S. holiday, so it's always great. Thanksgiving isn't a, day, a specific day either. It's related to the, to the Thursdays. So you need to work out when is it going to be? And then obviously, what, how do we track that lead up to it? Is it one week before? Is it two weeks? Do we need to track afterwards? Is there something that goes on in terms of our business? And the first step to do that is to piece together what a holiday calendar, calendar should be. And in terms of if you can say, well, we've got multiple different ways of doing it, you can, there's nothing stopping you having multiple holiday calendars or even using labeling within the holiday calendar I'll show you to make it easier and flag what you want the behaviors to be. The important thing, as with all of these things, is to start to understand and think about the logic that is going to be applied, not just once, but consistently across the piece. If you're doing something as a one and done, that's always a problem with this. Think about process and wrapping a process around something so that it's available consistently. If you like what you see and you think, oh, this is exactly what we need a company to help us with, get in touch. It's office at geordieconsulting.co.uk or give us a call, the number below. Okay. For now, though, let's cut on over and see what we're talking about. So here I am, okay, GitHub. What I've got in front of me is really it's the query route, road, okay, with a lot of help from Copilot for this. I've got one that we've already written. It's in our business. We're using it constantly. Um, this is one, as I say, we wrote with Copilot. Uh, so, and I've just added some parameters or just restructured a little bit to try to make the parameters a little bit easier. It's available in our GitHub. As I say, I'll put a link down below to it. What I would say, though, is make sure you have a calendar table in your business, right? You need that. It's one of the most important, if not the most important tables that you will build or that your analytics will have. Because how often do we do? What's the monthlies? What's this? How do we compare that? Is it year on year growth looking good? Is it month on month growth looking good? You need a calendar table for all of that. So you're going to need it. So make sure you get one. And how would I really bring this in from GitHub into Power BI Desktop, for example? Okay, I would advise you put it in as a data flow and have a shared data flow that you publish to everybody so that you kind of in really encourage everyone to use the same corporate calendar. You set it up with a daily refresh cycle and it just is maintained and stays up to date. So let's have a look at what it does and how we bring it through. So in GitHub, all you need to do is you click on the copy button. Okay, copy raw file. Zoom in, yeah, copy. It's really difficult, this. Okay, and I'm gonna cut on over to Power BI Desktop. What I'm gonna do is go to the, I'm gonna transform some data. So we're gonna basically add a blank query. Okay, so we've got the query out of the window. If I right click on it, say I want a new blank query, and then we get a nice blank query. We'll go to the advanced editor, highlight the values that are in there and paste in my new calendar. Click OK, right? 
Job one, job number one is done. Phew, it worked, right? Oh. And you can see really what we've got going on here. So we've got dates. I've got a formatted date column in here because for me, I like my dates in this format. Okay, if there's a format that you like, you might want to go down that route of having it. You can easily change the date format to be that, but just formatted date, I, it made sense to do. I wanted you to see this is something that you can do and there's a lot of power in here. One of the other things that we've got in here is we've got day name, we've got month name. Now in this case, these are full. You might just want the shortened versions of them. And you can see where we add month, for example, or add month name, sorry. We've got this with four M's. If you want it with the three letter abbreviation, just take one of the M's out, okay? Three M's is the first three or three letters because it does the same for D, for days or for um, year and things like that. So, okay, it's useful to be aware that, you know, these are available to you. As I say, day name, we've got the same where it's spelled out as D, but we could just drop that down. Okay, it's day of the week. These are all options. And you can see we've gone through, we've got everything, and you can see we've added the step at the end that Copilot didn't do in terms of this actually add some date formatting for all the, the columns. We've gone through a full column sweep. So I've built now my core calendar. Okay, so we'll give it a name. Calendar. Yeah, we should call it calendar. Right. So we've got a calendar. Now the question that we always get is kind of, and I've had this a few times in a few different variations in terms of, well, we're a global organization. How do we have global holidays? We need to understand what's going on with them. And the way you can do this is you can replicate what I'm going to show you in a minute. And actually, instead of it being against global, you could add a country or countries selector to it to allow you to pick the countries that they are. It's more likely that you might find this is a consistent grouping that you have. You can do that. So we, they'll be able to say, well, we're going to flag these countries as that. Or likewise, you could say, well, this is going to be the Christian thing that we're going to cap, that we're going to flag. We've got the big gotchas that we have around the festival seasons around for all religions. You know, they have these um, festivals or key points around the year that aren't tied to the calendar. They're tied to other events. So predominantly lunar events. So like Easter, um, obviously America has Thanksgiving, which is tied to something else. Um, but you can see what's going on with these. That There's a key need to be able to really understand how can we leverage and pull those things together. So let's go over and see what I've done to do it. So all I've done pretty simple, okay? This is not by no means like, the definitive proof that what you have to do. This is very much an example. You could go around there and say, well, we just want a title and a date because we're gonna make you do a row for each one. I've gone with a range, right? And Because I just think there's a little bit more complexity with it. So I'll show you how to do it with a range, like a start date and an end date. And so what we'll end up doing is we have to create values there and then when we merge it through, we need to pull it in so it actually ties these things together. It's not difficult to do, but it's one of those ones that you think, oh, what can we do? What do we need? What are we doing with it? So what we'll do is we've got a SharePoint list, haven't we? Okay, so we've got a SharePoint list. I've put some holidays in there. You can see we've got some with Windows in terms of like the Christmas and the Easter. And then we've got like one that's just a single day. So it's got a start and end date are the same. So we're kind of going, well, you know, we're going to start and end on the same day. So that should be one. But for the other ones, what we want to do is create effectively a way of flagging in the calendar. These are all this holiday. Okay. So we'll have a look at that, bring it into Power BI Desktop, and we'll get it going from there. Okay. So we've connected now to our SharePoint site. It'll bring up the list of lists that we have in the SharePoint site. See, I've got a fair few because of the various things that we've been working on with this. Let's just pick this one, okay? And we can see, here we go, right? So first off, what we'll do is I'm gonna just remove the blanks from here. So there's a blank row for some reason. I didn't see one when we were looking at it, but clearly there's a blank row, it's not a huge issue. So I'm just gonna remove that. What we want though, 
for this is we want the title, the start date, the end date, and the ID. So I'm going to select those and remove other columns. Okay. So we've got here these. Now the ID, this is the row number within SharePoint. Okay, so this is really useful. So if you were doing something where you were using a lookup or doing the like, you, you know, your ID, you want that to link back to the other table. You know, if you're going to write a power app to wrap around this, uh, which is quite easy to do, actually quite a nice way of doing it. If you were going to go down this route and you were going to have different ones for different countries or the likes, you'd probably want to build a power app to make it far easier for the people who are going to maintain it. And again, remember what I said about a process. If you do it that way, it's a bit more complicated and takes longer to set up. But the day-to-day -day running, once it's in place, is much easier. And six months, 12 months later, when you've kind of moved on to a different thing, it's easy enough for someone to go, well, you know, you go to the app, you update the holidays, you press save, it emails you a copy of what you've done or whatever you've got going on. It can record in a list or in a dataverse table what you've done and who's done what. So you've got an audit trail as well. You can set it so it locks in. But anyway, we're not going to get into that now. But remember, process is something we're thinking about. So we've got this, yeah? We've got our lovely, simple table. What we're going to do, all right, is we're going to set all these to be dates, because these need to be dates, not date times. And the last thing that we're going to do is then we need to create a custom column that's going to be based on the duration for them, yeah? Yeah? Let's go back. So these two, I'm going to set this to be date. Set this to be date. Okay, again, this has worked. I'll tell you what, let's see what Copilot does in with this, because this would be um, custom column, be list dot date dot, yeah, my head with the syntax. Let's check what Copilot can do. Okay, so yeah, I've run it already. I've deleted it, I've rerun it. Let's rerun it and see what it's going to go on. What I've put in, I've put a prompt in. So in Power Query, I have a table of holidays start dates and end dates, and I want to create a table of holiday and date based on pivoting the start and end dates to give a list of date values, okay? So it's quite simple, the query I've given it. Let's see what it comes back with. So it's like, sure, no worries. You need to create a custom column, which is what I already said we need to do. And it's given me, here is the syntax for it. Okay, so we'll create a custom column based on this. Okay. And yeah, it's, yeah, list.dates and start, yeah. It's a pain in the neck trying to remember how to do all these. I like remembering the syntax of these things. It just gets painful. So let's go back over into our Power BI file. And let's go to create a new custom column. So add a column, custom column. Temp rows. Okay, so we've got start date, end date. Yeah, no errors. So as expected, this is going to give us a list. So if we click on here, what we want to see down here is have we got the right list of values? So we've got 24th to the first, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th. Okay, so we've created a list of values based on what are all the dates and the duration. So if we can come, if we come back, and we then expand it, like it was saying, what you'll see is it'll create duplicate rows now based on that. And we've got the ID, the date, and we don't really need the start and end date anymore. So what we can do is we can highlight these two. Let's remove these, remove those columns. Let's make that a date. Let's make this an ID or a whole number. Let's call ID our holiday ID. Yeah, and holiday. Okay, so what we've suddenly got is an ability that what we can do is we can now go come to our calendar table and we can then say, well, what we want to do is merge. So on the home, merge queries. Merge in holidays and temp rows with that. Okay. 
And what we find is we suddenly have, if we expand this out, let's just keep holidays for now. Okay, and then for the sake of this, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to remove null. Okay, so this holiday current moment is only going up to the end of 2024, but you can see we've got this. And at the moment it's saying Christmas 2024, we could set that so if it was present, it would be a one versus, or a true versus a false for is holiday. We can add a column for this. We can, there's all sorts of things we can do, but the core thing is we've now linked that SharePoint list with our calendar that we've got. And the two can be linked and they refresh daily. So as we add additional holidays in, this will automatically work. The way this is all built is it's set up this way. So you've got start date, end date, corporate month start and start of week are the ones to worry about. And you can see this, if we look at the advanced editor, for here, I probably should have showed you all this beforehand, you can see we've got these areas here in config, only edit these values. So a start date, an end date, corporate calendar in terms of, you know, we start in August or do you start in April or March or whatever you do, you can put that in there and that will then adjust your corporate calendars and there's corporate month values in there and then start of week, which of course is important for when you do week calculations. So what do you reckon then? Building a corporate calendar is something that you need to do, okay? There's, there's no shortcuts with it. Um, you can start with what we've got. Uh, you could have one that you built yourself five, 10 years ago, and it still be fine for you. There's no real issue. If you've got an ERP system in your business, chances are you might already have a calendar of some description. You know, if you can bring that into your Power BI platform or your Power Platform platform, then use it, okay? There's, there's no reason why you should be creating your own. In practice, and based on my experience, I would say own one yourselves, even if your business has one, largely because you you might have different needs or over time when those systems change that calendar as it as it is might not be available again process wrapping needs to be available not just today but tomorrow and in the future so taking the the pain and bringing it in-house just makes sense that's not to say you need to do it on day one of your platform because remember Process wrapping, continual improvement means that we're going to do stuff over time. We might say for day one, we are going to use the Oracle or the SAP or the uh, Dynamics calendar. And then we might decide as we get bigger and move further forward that at some point in the future, we will bring it in-house. We might decide, oh, we should really bring it internally when? And you might know. There might be when we bring in the R&D calendar, for example, there might be something different. Or when we bring in the um, the global systems, we might need to do it because the holiday calendar is tied to a particular country. Um, that's not really unusual. It's quite common that the core corporate calendar is tied to around HQ dates and timescales, whereas potentially if you're a large global retailer, you want something that's more global in reach and has the capability, like we've just shown with the holiday calendar, of being able to cope with the holidays or the the seasonality, that's oh, the word I should have used, the seasonality globally across your business. So I hope that made sense. If that all made sense and you like it, let us know down below what you think. Let us know what you think. Is our, do, should we add weekends? This is something I've really missed with that whole corporate calendar build, in which case we're quite happy to slot it in now, you know, might as well. The point of putting it on GitHub was just to kind of give you guys something to get started with. For now, though, stay safe, take care. Ta-da.